Hey everybody, Mayor Cam Guthrie here, and I am in Orangeville. And I am here with the mayor of Orangeville. This is Lisa. How are you? I'm good, Cam. How are you? Welcome to Orangeville. Thank you. It's been great so far. You have a lovely, lovely city. And uh, we, we, you know, we, we banter back and forth a little bit on online. Uh, but we also ran into each other at FCM, yep. Federation of Canadian Municipalities. And immediately, one of the things that you said to me when you stopped me was, uh, uh, I see you always talking about transit. Uh, did you know what we're doing in Orangeville? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and I was like, no, what are you doing? You know, we we have uh, free transit in Orangeville. I said, you do not. Are you serious? And you're like, yep. And so ever since then, I've been wanting to get together with you because I really want to, I'm going to pepper you with questions. Uh, but uh, I want to know how it's working for you, what, how, you know, what, what you can do to implement it or what lessons learned, etc. And uh, it is uh, something that, to some degree, not only is the city of Guelph potentially looking at from portions of ridership that could be free, uh, but that that's in other cities too, including, you know, you see it here and there, like cities deciding free transit. Yeah. And so I really want to understand uh, all that topic. So I really appreciate you being with, uh, with you know, you're, you're a new mayor this term, right? I am. So I was a councillor. I was elected councillor first in 2018. Okay. And I ran for mayor in 2022 successfully. So here okay. I am. And the size of your city, what's the population here? We're still a town. So we're yeah. just over 30,000. Okay. Yeah. Great. And our growth targets are to get us to about 37,000. Okay. Yeah. So before maybe, before we get into the like kind of the foundational stuff about the free part of mm -hmm. transit give me a lay of the land of transit uh maybe before the free part like how, how many how many would you know ridership or do you know how many buses you had or i don't routes? know our, i don't know our ridership specifically yeah, but it was fair. it was fairly low um and and part of the reason it was low was because we really only had three routes there was a long wait between um, buses so often you were waiting 40 okay. or 45 minutes if you missed a bus you were 45 minutes till the next one and the problem with that is that Orangeville is only 16 square kilometers sure so I can walk everywhere in about an hour so if I have to wait an hour for a bus or 45 minutes for a bus I almost may as well walk if I'm able That's right? right yeah so um, the ridership wasn't great the primary ridership we were getting was students on really terrible winter days okay. and seniors but okay. then we were making seniors wait forever for a bus and, yeah. and it wasn't really beneficial that so we've had a transit system in orangeville for probably about 25 or 30 years okay but it's always been a fairly small system and over the last decade or so we upgraded from small buses to larger low floor okay. buses which yep. was good yep. um, we've been looking at ways to expand the ridership just to make sure that the whole town was covered because yes. that was the other problem is that only about 40 or 50 percent of the town was being covered by those routes okay because yeah often when i hear from transit um you know people advocates and such it's always about uh, two things frequency and coverage absolutely you know those two things and how do they fit so some of those issues were a problem um, and if transit's not good, people won't take it. Yeah, exactly. If it's not reliable, if it's not going to get them where they need to be in the right amount of time, yeah. people just won't take it. They'll it's, find another way. It's not their choice then. That's yeah. right. So you come in as mayor. Now, I'm sorry I, to ask this, but like, was this idea percolating before or after? Did you run on this? Was this like a platform issue? No. So we actually approved it during my last term of council. It was when it was oh, approved. Okay. Okay. So it was implemented for a start date of January, but it was approved during our last term okay. of council. Okay. That's um, it was almost unanimous when it was voted upon. We thought of different ways that we could implement it, but we landed on... Let's try it free for two years and see what happens. That'll okay. give us the data that we need. We didn't have great data about our transit to begin with. Okay. So this would allow us an opportunity to get better data, watch our ridership, see what those numbers were. Because all we really had was ridership. That was all that we had. We didn't necessarily have times of day and ages. No and other metrics and, things, and right? no other data points. Yeah. Okay. So it started, the free transit started in January. January 1st, yep. And um, how did you fund it? Was it out of reserves because it's a pilot project or did, was it, how did you? We budgeted for it as, budgeted part, for it? Of, okay. as part of this year's budget. We budgeted for okay. that loss in transit. Okay. Um, and we know too that because of how transit is funded in Canada, like using, we do get some federal money for transit. Yep. Yep. Um, and that money that comes from the federal government is based on ridership. 
Yes. So if we can increase ridership, we're going to increase our grant money and, okay. and maybe there won't be as much of a loss to you. Okay. So we knew that was a possibility. Okay. So we didn't bank on a certain dollar amount of extra gas tax yeah, yeah. money that we're going to get, but yep. we know that that'll be a benefit as well. Okay. So you figured that into the formula. Yeah. Okay. So January 1st comes around. Yeah. Free transit, everybody. Yeah. And it's just free transit. Like, That's it. Go for it. Yep. Okay. So... How's it going? It's going excellent. <laughs> so we've had our, so what started off, which was very cool, was starting to hear some of the stories coming from our drivers. Um, I checked in with drivers quite often just to yeah. see what was going on, what they were seeing. Our drivers that we have in Orangeville have been with us a really long time, so they know yeah. who's riding with us. They know the riders, and they said, there's so many new faces. There's people we don't know. Sure. And then they said, well, there's also people we do know who are now taking the bus more frequently. Oh, okay. And specifically, some of the stories that we were hearing was about seniors who normally would take the bus once a week to go to the grocery store, get their groceries, bring them back to their home or apartment, yep. and that was it. Okay. Now they're going home with their groceries, leaving them, getting back on the bus, and going, drive, coming downtown on the bus, meeting their friends for a coffee. Uh, or, you know, okay. so now they're riding the bus several times a week instead of just once a week to get their groceries and go home. Because now it's affordable. Now it's not something they have to budget for. Now they can come downtown and spend that little bit of money on a coffee sure, instead sure. of transit. So it's not just about free, it's about freedom. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Sorry, a little bit of marketing I like it. there. For I like it. <laughs> uh, okay. So you just talked about the increase of people, and you gave an example of someone coming downtown. Yeah. Right, to your beautiful downtown, by the way. Um, is have have you observed? Has people observed like more economic increase because? People are out more, using it more. That will be kind of a TDD. Shop. We'll have to yeah. we'll have to see what the merchants downtown say. But I have heard uh -huh. stories from the merchants that they are hearing of people using the bus or waiting. Okay. You know, I'm going to grab a coffee before the bus comes, yeah. which was some of the conversation that's happening now, which is great. So until we had some data numbers, we were kind of going by the anecdotal stories we were hearing, yeah. which were all very positive. You yeah. know, we heard from people who use the food bank that you not having to pay their transit fees was the difference of them being able to buy milk and bread for the week. So mm -hmm. those were some of the benefits we thought we'd see. The thing about seniors was a bit different. And I was like, oh, I didn't think of that one. That's yeah. a really great yeah, one, yeah. right? And then just recently, I guess at the end of May, we got our first report back on some of the numbers oh. that showed some you, of- Okay, so do you, I was gonna ask, yeah. are you getting them? So when did, when does the- We've got our first round of numbers back. Okay, May, and is it gonna be every May or do you do like two a year? We're uh, gonna do a couple of updates a, couple, a year, probably okay. two or three updates we'll get from- So what did May, did, do you know offhand? I do. Okay. I do. So our ridership- You're the mayor, you're supposed to know That's everything. right, I should know all of everything. them, right? <laughs> well, this one I'm really proud of because our ridership increased 71%. Wow. Really? <laughs> From January to May. Wow. So that's a big deal. That's a big deal. It shows it is a big deal. Well, and in a town like Orangeville, a lot of what we were seeing, even with some of the students, and I've got a 17 year old daughter and she's one of them. Yeah. She didn't grow up using transit because we lived in this town. Sure, so we didn't sure. have a great transit system. She got a ride everywhere or would walk. Yeah. She was not comfortable using transit because she didn't know how the routes worked. So some of it was just having the opportunity to train people how the routes work and doing go it for, for free. Go for a ride. Try it out. Ride. Try it. See okay. how it goes, yeah. right? Yeah. So some of it is now that we've taught them how to use it. They've gotten comfortable with it. Yes. And now they're comfortable using it. So the next for the next step, I'm not expecting these massive jumps constantly, but I hope we can sustain that 71% increase yeah. in ridership. Because yeah. as buses drive around town pre-free transit, even somewhat now, you hear you know some some messaging from the public saying, "Well, why do we even have buses? I don't use them. Every time the bus drives down my street, it's empty." Ah, uh, yes. Right. I hear that one too. Right. Yes. So, to be able to justify it is having some numbers, seeing that the bus is being yeah, used, and, sure. and that matters, right? It does. It does. By the way, I don't know if your answer to the <laughs> "I see the bus go by my house empty." <laughs> Uh, it for you is, but mine is, well, it could be empty as it goes by, but it could pick up 20 people around the corner that you don't absolutely. see. I don't know if you use that answer, but no, that, absolutely. And that is true by the way. Yeah. All right. So, um, here's an interesting question then. Do you, have you had to increase any like capital or operating, uh, because of the increase in ridership or does the current complement of drivers and buses uh, work still, even with that 70 some odd percent increase? Good question. So as we started to plan for free transit, one of the things that we did was looked at all of those capital pieces ahead of time. Okay. And one of the things that helped to fuel our free transit decision was that we were already looking to make investments in transit. And okay. we knew that there was going to need to be a change with some of the development that's happened. Our whole town wasn't being serviced. We needed to rebalance the routes. One was way longer than the other as we kind of added, had to add stops to it. Mm -hmm. So there was already an idea that we would 
build a new transit transfer point, um, make sure that it could be utilized by our transit system as well as any countywide tour transit that may come, as well as go buses and things like that, make it so it works for everybody. Um, rebalance the route so there was already going to be an investment in additional buses to rebalance those routes yeah, yeah. so being able to offer it free was just a way to increase ridership as part of that as well okay. so it, it kind of the other way around we were investing in capital so we wanted to increase ridership as well i understand yeah okay so that was kind of a a perfect alignment then absolutely so we were trying to just make it work all around yeah yeah okay Okay, I want to play devil's advocate with you for a second. Sure. Because this is some of the stuff I hear. Yeah. Just to give you a Guelph perspective for a second. So um, we don't have like free transit across the board. Uh, we do have, we originally had a free transit, I believe like up to age five. And then last year council approved a pilot project for kids to ride free up to age 12. Awesome. We got that report back, just like you're getting reports mm -hmm. on how it's going. And it was an overwhelming success. So council unanimously approved to make that permanent. Great. Perfect. We have uh, a motion, I'll admit that came from myself, uh, to now look at uh, free transit for basically high school uh, and, and under, uh, and then also for seniors. And we can define what seniors would be another time. We yeah. don't know what age that is or whatever. And um, I've seen some other communities do that. I think Oakville is doing that right now, actually, yeah. and some others as well. I think Burlington was looking into it Oh, as I well. think so, yes, I yeah. think you're right. Um, but the devil's advocate, the, 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 the flip side to it is, why are you doing this swath of just free this and free that for these different categories or these different demographics? And instead not focusing it on like income-based or um, for people that, truly need it not the um families or individuals that you know you can can afford it so like why are you helping those people out and not the people kind of in need what how, did that come up in conversation with your council at all before you decided to do the thing where have you heard any of that kind of argument because i'm hearing it uh i've heard now. some of that argument okay. for sure um and you know my answer to that is that whenever we have social programs especially where there is income attached the other thing that happens when income is attached is there's a stigma attached uh -huh. and when we ask people to prove that they are in need that can create a real division within the community. Okay, yeah. And one of the things that's great about doing it across the board is that it's an equitable solution. It's for everybody. There's no stigma attached to it. It doesn't matter sure. what you make, you're all eligible for it because it's a community social good program. This is okay. this is a way for to build community, to keep growing community. It's good for the environment. It's good for social benefits. And it's I find it's always good to try and weigh out the fiscal cost to the social benefit yeah. and again with some of the stories that i've already told you that we're seeing we're seeing huge social benefits sure. for this program yeah. and if those seniors had to prove their income if those riders had to prove their income some of them may not take part in it some of them would walk mm. away from transit and go i'm not going to do the paperwork for that i don't want to show somebody else that i'm in need for a program or for some of them they're too proud to admit that they need the help yeah, um, okay. we had we had some seniors who were like just let me pay like I know I need to pay for this right when yes. they were getting on the bus because okay. they're accustomed to yep. and trying to show them that no you know what we're trying to do a, a get, bit of a give back program and make sure that hmm. it's a community a community piece okay good answer yeah <laughs> how much did this cost this program do you know we don't have transit as large as well so I yes, know I that know. the, <laughs> the cost know. will be a bit different it's, so it's okay it costs about two hundred thousand dollars a year okay. to be able to what offer is, the program what is that in perspective to like do you know like how much of a percentage increase on your overall city budget that was or it's less than one percent of what our what a tax what a one percent tax increase would be in Orangeville yes. is about three hundred and seventy five thousand so it's under one percent increase okay. So okay. we've we've been able to do it without it directly impacting our taxes. Yeah. Um, and it, from an increase, we've just balanced it as part of our budget. We we accounted for the fact that this is what it was going to cost, and just so you made might sure have that it reduced was reduced elsewhere here yeah. for these things, yeah. and you put it as a priority. That's right. Interesting. Okay. Well, look, this is awesome. First of all, how can people? find you online like you know oh i'm everywhere thing. i'm yeah. everywhere you can tell, find me tell, on tell facebook us. you can yeah. find me on twitter instagram the new threads i'm on tiktok um I'm under, too many now. i know i can't <laughs> keep up with them threads i think i've only been on once because i don't even understand it yeah, yet yeah. but uh, i'm under everything as either merely supposed or least supposed or least supposed to so i'm pretty easy to find and okay. i'd be happy to chat with everybody um anybody can send me an email as well at lpost at orangeville.ca well i really appreciate the time i'm glad you came I, today uh, yeah thank you so much and uh I think that um, 
uh, it's great leadership. Thank you. Yeah, from you and your council to think about this. And, uh, you know, I was talking to a couple of your staff members too that were uh, in charge of this and there's just positivity around that too. And and so it's it's interesting. And I, I think it's a, a good position to be in, especially to position at least for a couple of years as a pilot program because yeah. you are so... Um, wanting that data, the metrics, the stories. That's exactly the it. Stories. We want the stories, we want the data, to, we want to make to sure make you're making the right decision. Exactly. And I, I and that, that's appropriate. Yeah. That's responsible government, you know, instead of just ramming it down and it is what it is. You wanna these are big changes. Absolutely. These are big changes. So I think it's appropriate the way you've done it. So And there's a real positive feedback in the in the among town hall as well that everybody wants to see it succeed. We want yeah. to be able yeah. transit's one of those weird topics that's one of those if you build it they will come. Hopefully, mm. right? Yes. So we have to build a good transit system so that people want to take it. Yeah. And hopefully from there, we can have good ridership and get people around the town. Well, I'm going to be following along. Awesome. I'll send <laughs> you all the reports. Yes. <laughs> Great. More reports. <laughs> That's right. uh, but I, I do appreciate the time and I, I really wish you success with this. I will be, I'm sure many other people will be following along too. And yeah, you're the best. Thank you so much. Thanks, Cam. I yeah. appreciate it.